All right, we are going to one of the big sector of finite arrow concept. Anything that uses a carbon tube and slows at epoxy is considered as an arrow concept. Why is this so important? And what is the core of one of most of the finite arrow behavior? Just like you know that we just went through an arrow system which include broad head, field points, and so on. Now we're going to talk about the arrow concept. The first thing you notice about arrow concept, except this guy. See the arrow outsert? Do you know that arrow outsert can be used in arrow concept? That's the only exception to the rule. That single piece can use for both. I'm going to do it. Now the diff <clears throat> the first thing I want to talk about is arrow bolt. That's the one thing that pretty much launched arrow concept. This is what happened in, two in 2008. When Scorpet come to me and told me, hey Dodge, I cannot possibly make <clears throat> a gold tip laser 2 to shoot with a scorpion crossbow because he's firing at 420 feet per second. Doing basic calculation, I told him he need about a 200 spine shaft to work with it. At that moment, the only crossbow shaft is a gold tip laser 2. Okay, what's the spine number on a gold tip laser 2? Answer is 300. In order to shoot correctly with the scorpion, you need a 200 spine. In order to make it work, the original arrow bow is based on the go tip laser 2, which is same as a go tip 22. They just cut the 22 in 22 inches or 20 inches. That's what a go tip laser 2 is. The go tip laser 2 is a go tip 22 cut to 20 or 22 inch, which is 300 spine. And what I did is that I designed, I just used the go tip insert on the laser 22, and I insert. Well, guess what this piece is? This piece is a gold tip, pro, uh, gold tip hunter, which have 298,000 in a 300 spine, eight inch, 11 inches inside this thing, to give it a total of 200 spine. Well, guess what? It didn't work, and it break, and it crack, and do all kind of stuff. Because what happened? You crack right here. Because every time we shoot the insert and the arrow carbon tubing. So fighting each other. Eventually it cracked right here. So since it cracked right here, I say, well, I need let's let's just strengthen this. So I come with the arrow insert. Uh, this is called the D. The reason it's called D because it got double shouldered. So the tubing go to the shoulder and then go into the shaft. The weakest link becomes the strongest link. <laughs> Very important. I'm going to just stop everybody right here and tell you. When you do arrow concept, okay, especially in production environment, not individual, not a single person, but production environment, in order to get these two pieces to done correctly, especially in 204 size, what do you need to do? You need to square this arrow, the inner tubing, glue the insert into the, glue the arrow, the arrow concept tubing into the insert first and spin it and stand the entire thing on the insert in bulk. Do you know why you want to do that? Not do the whole thing in one shot, but do exactly what I just said. So your epoxy, so you can allow your epoxy at one time? No, so that your insert and tubing are actually aligned perfectly. Because in case of a 204, if the tubing, if the arrow is not straight, the tubing is not straight, the tubing is curved, the arrow is curved, and they curve together, you force the insert to be off. There's no way to correct it. So the first thing, just like, you remember when, uh, oh no, you may not know, the previous people in, Bro uh, in, in another archery shop, they did not do that. They make a lot of 204 and none of them are straight. Because in order for a 204 to be right, you first you install this and this, and you make sure they're concentric and they're glued together. Because when you push the tubing into the tube, being such a thin shaft, how the hell are you able to turn this while turning this? So you need to glue these two together, make their concentric first, before you put inside the shaft. That's where the mistake is. In a 246, it's okay. The 204 is where things get really touchy. So yes, would you do this is better? Yes, when you are free. For every insert you have, you should glue the insert into the tubing and let them sit. That's your system. In other words, you want to bind the insert with the tubing as a system to start with. 
Because unlike others, I already de determined everybody and their cousin is going to use 6-inch tubing only. So you have insert, you have nothing better to do. By the way, you don't need to use my LGUSC. You can use super glue gel. In most cases, I suggest JB Weld. JB Weld will do much better than anything else. Because JB Weld will bind these two together permanently. Because JB Weld, because it's got iron molecule, it will actually eat into the aluminum and eat to carbon. It will never come loose. Because if you do not do that, sometimes when you shoot really hard target and multiple times, the insert would come out. Now you have to re-glue. But if you use JB Weld, by the way, the JB Weld, the black and white one, not the plastic. You just glue these two together and put them up to you. Stand it straight up, make sure they stand up, just put, after you finish, after about eight hours, you can bundle them and put them in the side. Will make building the arrow much easier. Because remember, your insert will only go into arrow. Your double shoulder insert will only make with the carbon. So when you have three times, go ahead and build those first. Then you can decide the rest. All right, next slide. Now, you look at it. This, see, this is the original arrow bolt. That's the arrow bolt to, this is the arrow bolt to 200. The arrow bolt to 200, see that's a 250 right here? That's based on a gold tip laser three. This is based on a gold tip laser three shaft. That's the history of arrow bolt. The original arrow bolt is based on a gold tip laser two, then the low tip laser three, then the old tip laser three with private label from us, uh, from gold tip. Then we move to the next generation. See the insert? Original, this is what it looked like. The basic reverse tapered, which got arrow insert A. Now look at that. That is called arrow insert D. But now we merge the two to technology together to then discontinue it because this is not reverse tapered. Now we have this and we have this. That's the reason arrow insert H is the only one. Arrow insert D is no more. You guys have not seen it because I could discontinue that in 2013. So you can see it's called double technology. That's the reason H hybrid. You get a reverse tapered and you got a double shouldered. As I said again, if you are in a, in a, in a, a production environment like you guys, you should always install the insert into the tubing and spin balance it on the spinner, on the APS, to make sure they're right and stand it on the insert. Because you know this surface is very, very flat. But make sure your table is indeed flat or else they all fall down. All right, next one. All right, the arrow concept system. Okay, this is, we are talking about the parabolic action of shaft and the node. First of all, any of you have heard what the node is? All right, the node is here. When you shoot an arrow, that's a point of the arrow shaft will not move, but allow the flex to happen. In other words, the fulcrum of the arrow when you launch it. Ideally, you have to have your arrow rest on the node, that point. Now imagine if your arrow rest is here, when you shoot your arrow, the whole arrow will lift off the rest and down because that's how much deviation is dealing with. If it flex down, this is much. Flex up is this much. Now how do you find the node? Let me teach you that way. You got your arrow fully built with a few points on it. You find a block of most probably oak. Then you hold the arrow loosely and you, you hit it on the block of wood. You all of a sudden will hit a point around inch to an inch half of your arrow shaft with the few points of broad on it. Yes, you change the broadhead to a few point, your node will change. That's the reason most people will move from a few point to a node, a few point of broadhead. Because the node changed, the accuracy suffered. Now, what does that mean if you happen to shoot a brand new integrated rest? How are you going to adjust the arrow length on your rest? You can't. What happens if you shoot a different broadhead that's longer, your, broad, your node just moves backwards? How are you going to adjust that? You couldn't. What does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> They're able to move an arrow rest forward and backward is one of the most critical thing for any bow setup if you want to shoot it correctly because you want the node to be right on. Am I helping? You need to understand the concept first before I can go to arrow concept system because you need to understand this is what happened on a normal arrow or crossbow. 
Cosmos ball has got stiffer. Now this is, let me get the terms right. This is called the magnitude of flex. This is your knock. This is your point and that's your node, all right? All the term down, good. Let's go into the arrow concept. The moment you put a carbon inner tube in the front, what happened to the node? You change the angle of the flex. The node is no longer one point. Because technically on the node, you cannot be off from the node for more than one eighth of an inch. Or else your arrow, your arrow rest would be here and here. See that? Or here and here. That means if your arrow rest is here, every time you launch, your entire arrow is flexing up or down when you launch it. Which explains why so many times when you cut an arrow too short, you have this. You have, they are flexing right here. Or here, not here. No, so how do we overcome this, especially when you shoot an arrow rest that cannot be moved forward and backward? You want to try to cut your arrow one quarter of an inch and refresh at a time to make sure it's right? That's going to be pretty rough, isn't it? But how many people actually understand this portion? <laughs> I'm serious. If you look to 10 dealership, archery dealership, if you got two that can answer this question, you're in a really good town. <laughs> Most of them have no clue this is how the arrow flexes. Now, the worst part, the higher the let off, the larger the magnitude, the more precision, more precise the note need to be. The thinner the shaft, the more precise it be because there's more memory. The thinner the arrow, the more the memory effect of a shaft. So, what does that mean? The larger the arrow, the more forgiving it is. The higher the let off, the worse it gets. As a matter of fact, from a 90% off to an 80% off at 60 yards, that is close to an 8% difference in terminal velocity with the same arrow. The 90% let off is less terminal velocity. That's no free lunch. As a matter of fact, 90% let off will be less accurate because you can't hold the bow steadily. So the lower the let off, the better the bow is. The nine, higher the percent off, the more tricky you're able to shoot the ball. That one very simple, basic, what you call it, significant figures. What's the percentage difference between an 85% off and 80% let off? People say 5%. No, it's not 5%. It's 33%. You're holding 15 pounds compared to 20 pounds on a 100 pound ball. That's a 33% difference. So the first thing, if you want to shoot good, you want to shoot well, you, just like if you should go Western hunt, that's the reason PSE makes 65% for all the Western hunters, because the arrow speed of a terminal velocity of an arrow, as the let off goes out, the terminal velocity goes down. It is less efficient, the more difficult to shoot accurate, which is what most people don't know. They want the 90% that love. Oh, look at this. I'm holding six pound on my 60 pound bow. And the arrow goes everywhere. But then if those guys only shoot 25 yards, that's not a big deal. Because the percentage difference do not become dramatic until hit 60 yard mark. And most people don't shoot 60 yards. Now let, let's look at this. You notice that the moment I put an arrow concept tube with that in it, you notice that the dot, which is the node, what happened to it? It's longer. It's longer. Th the fact is that it is not longer. The only true difference is actually the magnitude of differences and the angle of difference. Assuming that it's actually closer to 35 degree, when you have three degree here, this whole space is about the same as that space, isn't it? Which means that now all of a sudden the arrows node space, not the node change, the node is still here. But the effect of the node is this long. That's the difference, is the effect of the node spot is elongated to an average of three quarter to a full inch, compared to one sixteenth of an inch dot. That's where the difference between using arrow concept, that's significantly better. Now second, you notice the magnitude of the shaft dropped. Those are the actual condition of the result. Why is it so important? 
which means let me give you an, uh, on, on the actual that I shoot on based on the 70 pounds, uh, 70 pounds 30 inch draw bow. On a basic arrow design, on a high velocity like a Victory HV, it takes this arrow on a 246 about 18 yards to recover. That means you're going to a type about 10, 5 to 10,000 elliptical spin. Remember, the arrow was never stopped flexing in air. So when you saw reasonable flex, it still have a 5,000 elliptical spin in it. This will recover in 9 feet compared to 16 yards. Why? Because the, the, the inner carbon shaft that we make for you, come, instead of the old days, I use a gold, tip, a gold tip arrow shaft. This is, I designed it. I designed it, for example, I inside the highest module, it should be a 42 million module carbon. Which means the harmonic of this shaft will guarantee to not be the same as this. Just like in basic harmonics and sine wave, when you have two dissimilar sine wave merged together, they cancel each other or they become the lowest. They actually overlap each other and then minus. In other words, one is 10, the other is 5. When you push them together, answer is not 5. It's closer to 2. Isn't that beautiful? That means you originally have 10, now you have 2. That's the magnitude of frequency flex. So if this thing takes 18 yards to, to strengthen, this only takes 9 feet. That's a 600 reduction, 600% 600 reduction in flex. Remember, an arrow, when you shoot it, you only have that much energy on it. As the time passes, the energy is being consumed, which also explains why an arrow constant arrow with the same weight, it always hit higher. Because the energy is not consumed in flex, it's retained. That itself is why when you build arrow concept arrow, you notice it's the same identical way, it always hit higher. Now, when you're at 20, 30, you won't see it, about 40, 50, 60, it starts getting dramatic because the energy loss. Now, the thinner the arrow, the more the magnitude, the longer the flex. That means when you shoot a 166, 70 pound, 30 inch draw, the flex is closer to 22 yards. That's the reason when you, when you tune the bow for a customer at, 20, at, at, at 166, don't shoot a 20 yard target. You need at least a 22. In the case of 204, you need 20. In the case of 246, you can do 18. Crossbow, you can do up to 16. But the thinner the arrow, the longer it takes the time to stabilize. The higher the front of center, the longer it takes to stabilize. The arrow concept will now drop the entire process, an average of 600% in distance. So you save extra 500% of not lost. If you are not losing it, you are gaining it, right? Okay, next, video, next slide. Okay. This is what the harmonic dampening is about, which I just talked about it. This is the version 1.0. On the, originally, I designed it to put a carbon tube in the front only. Then oh, I got a customer, uh, actually a pro style of mine, say, Dodge, why not put it on the back? I say, no, it's not gonna work it's not because it's too difficult. He proved me wrong. As a matter of fact, I, I did, he built a bunch of arrow, I give him the material, he put the six inch of carbon tubing on the back. The entire nine foot flex on that 246 arrow stopped flexing at five feet. It's a 45% reduction in flex. Wait a minute, that's a big deal. Why can't everybody and their cousin, or all my dealers are building it? It is superbly difficult to build. And, and, and unless you build two, three years with successful arrow concept one, don't even touch this. Do you know why this is so difficult? You have to be absolutely perfect. Let me explain you what absolutely perfect means. When you build arrow castle in the front, if you do not glue that perfectly, what's going to happen to that carbon tube? You're going to stop at the insert, right? The insert is going to hold it and it's going to hold by the arrow shaft. What's the worst thing? The arrow is not that consistent because you've got, you got layer separation or the glue is separating with the arrow shaft. You won't see that much because majority of glue is working. But when you want to glue this tube, what's holding it? Nothing. How do you guarantee the glue will flow from front to back over that whole space perfectly? You couldn't. <laughs> so how do you do it? You build this first. Well, you got the arrow right. You use ABUS, a, 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 Aerovin Glue Super Slow Set Epoxy. 
okay? You mix that first at about 72 degree. You chamfer this shaft. You put the glue in first and you, you push the shaft in all the way with a knock. So in other words, you put the glue in first. Then you put the glue on the shaft and you chamfer this part and you perpendicularly push this in so the glue in the front will move into the shaft and the glue on the outside will move to the shaft so you do dual glue, glue flow so that this tube can be absolutely perfectly glued to the shaft that's a shitload of work isn't it for this so for the guy who built Aero Concept 2.0 it is not unusual they charge extra 55 bucks because that's that much work but what's the benefit? On the 60 yard compared to a normal arrow with the same weight, you're looking at 12 to 18 inch difference in arrow impact height. Because it also further lower the front of center. With the more than compound bow, the more lower front of center, the better off you are. The higher the lay off, the more less the front of center you are, which is exactly the opposite of everything you learned. But at the end of the day, you're still dealing with arrow shaft. The arrow shaft can only recover so much. So the moment you help the arrow fresh shaft to recover, you retain the energy, the arrow will fly better. But then the downside is that if the guy is a bad bow holder, do not have good forms, do not know how to shoot. Just like you give, the, you give a high school kid a brand new Formula One or NASCAR, it won't make the first turn. It's too much power. So you're better off not doing this. So let me sort of put it this way. This is the best, but you're going to take you years, years to learn how to build this correctly. This is not part of the practical exam. I won't force you on that, okay? If you want to do it on your own experiment, go for it. But the first thing you do, chamfer the front. Why do you need to chamfer it? So that when you put, you need to also put glue in the shaft. So you need to get yourself some six, eight inch long Q-tips. You're going to need it. So you put the glue inside, you push the tube in. So the chamfering of the tube will force the glue to go in from the front. And then you put the glue in the front here to start with. So there is enough glue from going front and middle and, and the end. So the entire tube is perfectly covered with glue because that's the only thing holding the shaft from going forward. So if the glue is not perfect, this whole tube is going to fly forward, isn't it, on every time you shoot it. So are you going to recover from it? You don't. You lost the whole arrow. <laughs> it's gone. It's so you only got one chance to do it right, and you have to do it perfect. That's a professional job. So until you got good at it, I don't suggest you build it for any customers. You may want to, for fun, build it for yourself. But when you build it for yourself, the, the result is phenomenal. In most cases, you can be a hundred grain heavier on the arrow shaft. You hit 60 yard higher than an arrow that is a hundred grains lighter in weight. And then from 60 yard onwards, you hit higher because it's so efficient in retaining the energy. Isn't that cool? Don't do it yet. Learn Arrow Concept 1.0 for a year first. You need to know, you need to build this part perfectly before you add this part to it. All right? All right, let's go to the arrow insert. Oh, that's the, two, that's the drag, dragging 202. Now, we, we started with this because most people at that time doing the 202 are for Africa big games. We're making aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium. You can see that that is actually the cross section based on that. The first one is actually the ID of 125 with the OD of 202. Those are 8.9 grain per inch in tubing. So when you put that tubing in here, that's 55 grain of weight just on the tubing. Then you added the insert in stainless steel, that's 55. That's 110 grains just right here. If you are not shooting dangerous game like a bison, pigs, that kind of animals, you don't need this. But if you want it, you, it's hard to beat this. This will be kept, this is a momentum that you won't believe because it's so, so tiny. So the moment you hit an eight millimeter broadhead, a good one, it will go through like it was nothing. So for North America, I would suggest this, okay? This is a base on 201 to 
this is the ID of this right here. It's 201,000. Do you want to use this on, uh, say, RIP or Gotip Kinetics? No, because Gotip Kinetics and the RIP is 204. This is 201 right here. Now you really got that 3,000 to play, isn't it? Now remember I tell you about this part of the tubing? Imagine this, if this tubing is crooked, you push this into it, you guarantee this to be crooked, am I right? So how then you turn this until it's not crooked? If you glue everything in one spot, you can forget about it. That's the reason when you build anything with aero concept, if you do production environment, unless you're building one at a time, you can very carefully malign them and so on, you're better off go ahead and glue the insert with the carbon tube as a whole. And if you really want to be precise, get yourself some trays. And after you glue them, you wake sort them. Now you can really build beautiful arrows. Because you wake sort them. Because at the end of the day, the amount of glue, the, that's, that's going to be difference in the insert there within quarter grain. That's going to be a quarter grain difference. When you add this together, that's half a grain now, right? So now you can sort them even further. Now you know why when you look at arrow bolts, there's, there's numbers on it. I'm telling you how long the insert tubing is, how, how long the, what insert I use, and what the arrow weight is. So that in the future, when your customer call you, you look at the arrow and say, ha ha, I need to use the 220 arrow bolt size weight with the insert of 6 inch with whatever insert it is. You can rebuild him the same arrow because you got all the specs there. If you look at my database, every customer who ever bought anything from me, I know exactly what component, what length, and what weight they have. Because that is what a professional dealer do. They know all the customer by heart and what they have. So this year, what did I do? As I say, when you deal with gold tip uh, kinetics, rib, and so on, final, final arrow width 204. The size is 204,000, right? So this year, I did these three. The difference between this and this is the OD is 201, the OD is 204. So as I say, in the 204 class, we have anything under 204 and anything over 204. It's 201 to 207. So I cut them right in the middle. The old one is to fit 204 or below. The new one is to fit the 204 and above. So it's 204 eco or larger. This is 204 smaller, period. And then that one, since it's built old, the old side is 203 because this is not meant to use on a 201 because 201 ain't going to cut it. You're going to use something at least a 300 spine or bigger and you don't want to use a Carbon Express SD. That's a 201. You stick with a rip, which is 300 or more or using an arrow with two, uh, uh, 350 or more. That's what a 204 does. Any questions? That's very critical. That is the reason they are all new. Okay, then we go to the next one. And 242 240, to 246. Now, these two pieces are only available to dealers. Normal customer can't get 204 brass, can't get 204 aluminum because they are only, f they're cheaper. And uh, I build this because when you buy sport weave, this is what you can buy with it. Because when you buy SWAT wave, you have to buy the inner tube and insert with it. Because otherwise, I won't sell you. This two price is, is cheaper, but because you have your knowledge, I know you will get it done right. This is stainless aluminum and stainless steel. This is 7075. This is for, uh, 304 stainless, my 420 stainless. This is machine brass and this is 6061. The price of this is about third cheaper. This is double. So as a certified and trained dealer, you all are, will be, this is what you can buy too. This is your budget brand and still have the performance. Let me give you an idea. Say you're a Black Eagle dealer. You can buy their, their outlaws, okay? Which is about 6,000 straightness. You put the brass or, or the 61 aluminum. It's not a joke. You can actually outshoot a Goatee Pro Hunter. That's 1,000 strengthness in penetration in flight because you got aero concept. Pretty nice, isn't it? Next one. Okay, the 300. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> Should I start? The 300 is the most complicated because the 300, you got so many crossbow, everything is needed. The 300 by on the get-go, you know there's two different tubings. A lot of people don't understand why it says two different tubings. The first tubing is very much like a gold tip 246-300. The modulation is pretty high. That's about a 3800 modular carbon. But the thin one, that's a whole different ball game. You know there's not much material in it, but that's a 42 million module carbon. That will force extreme recovery with no weight. Now that was used in the Aero Insert 3, the heavy, the 75, the light version 50, the light versions, and the G version. The G version is where I originally designed for Tramahawk. Remember when we talk about Tramahawk, I say I, what I do is that I will put an extreme heavy weight front, a hundred and uh, the 100 and, 175 grain on the broadhead, 100 grain on the insert, ultra lightweight high modular carbon. Why do I do that? Because I want that arrow bolt, the moment you shot out of it, to recover in 9 feet and go to a full gyroscopic spin with extreme forward momentum. Wait a minute, did you say that is no good? That is good if you design everything to match. First of all, the, the, the Tramahawk itself is a one-inch cut with internal groovings. That means the moment you start it, you behave like a top. But the top, in order to spin, you must have mass, right? What's this? 100. The shaft is super lightweight. That means the shaft is going to behave like a top spindle. It's super lightweight, but you need the shaft to start because you need to push it out. So that is lightweight, but it will recover superbly fast, which will allow your broadhead to spin crazy with Aerovin 3. You got all the torque you want, all the momentum you want. That's the reason this setup, if you use a scor uh, say a Scorpion uh, Orion Extreme and you shoot a deer, you're going to see a hole about this big because you tear right, right through. And you know the best part is, and the, the worst part is as a dealer, that guy will never buy another Tramahawk. Because I got a customer who bought Tramahawk in 2015. He used to buy seven packs of Ramcat for me a year. He still haven't bought his second broadhead yet. That's eight years of hunting. Because this design and this approach, the broadhead don't need to be sharp. You don't even need a quiver. You put the freaking broadhead and arrow in your back pocket and you go hunting. Because nothing is sharp. It's the spin rate and the tear that kills the animal. Isn't that crazy? But then, some people say, I would like, I want to do pegs and so on. The skin is heavy, the charm hole is not going to work. That's the reason we make the monster, which now lets you use the thick wall. And now the whole thing will have stout. This is one of the most durable shafts you can buy now. And the power. This is technically a design for Africa big game, and also for pegs. For lightweight version, which is right, th these three, okay? That is for the lightweight for people who want to shoot something like the, uh, at that point, like your basic center point, not your Raven. Because the power is less, you have a rail. So you now want the arrow to recover reasonably fast without dragging it too slow. That's the reason the L version come into play. Now you remember, they both have the heavy wall and thin wall. The L version and the thin wall, we're using that. Again, the middle two section, now the A, B, C, and S. A means aluminium in 7075. B means brass. C means cheap, based on 6065 aluminium. And S means stainless steel. As a dealer, you can buy this too. This is not available in the website or any, not for retail. I do not recommend you sell this to any customers. You only sell it as a finished arrow. Because this is cheap material. The finished product is what makes it not cheap. So that's the reason the B and the C are only available to dealers, which I expect them to finish product. I do find some, some dealers sell that out to customer to build. They are no longer a dealer. I'm very strict on this. Because see, the whole reason I make this, so that you make more money as a dealer, because I trusted your skill to build this correctly, even if the material is cheap. But when you build it, the finished product is more than good enough. 
Am I helping? Okay, next slide. All right, then we move to the 315. Now this is where, and the 320. This is where your go, your, your go tip three, your go tip 32, your go tip 93, and so on, or your PS23 come into play. This is your 315 and 320. 320 is your 93, 315 is your PS23, and also your Arrow Weave uh, 315. You can see that. Again, they only use the 315 and the 320 tubings. They are all both about the same weight because the wall thickness is technically identical. That's for target. Let's go to the next one. Uh, we will be dealing with summary. You can see that. This is the insert and what they use with CTI. So the entire arrow concept is based on all the CTIs. You can see that. Are the carbon inner tubes. Yep, carbon, inner, carbon tube inners. Now, the code. When you look at AIH and so on and so on, this is how we break down. The first A means arrow, ins arrow. the second character is I means insert, the third is angled, double is discontinued hybrid, the next two characters is the ID of the shaft. So the 20, the L means 204 for the light, 23 means 234, 24 is 246, you can see it's all there. See the heavy, okay? And finally, the last character, A for aluminum, 775, B for brass, C for cheap aluminum, S for stainless steel, T for titanium. And the word four, which I added this year on the very back, is due because we got a 204 or above. So instead of six character, in some occasion you got a seventh. Because I want to differentiate it. I, do I like that? No, but there's no way around it. We just keep growing. <laughs> All right. Finally, stalker. Oh my God, on the 166. If you are really into 166, this is the ultimate. You know what we talk about stalker? With just a basic reverse taper? What did we just do now? And the second coming in the tube. So, Yes, if a customer loves the goatee kinetics, can you still make them a good arrow? You can. You pay for it. They need to pay for the labor to get it fly right. You just slap an insert on it, none of them are going to fly right. If you have done enough goatee kinetics, uh, platinum peers, you notice how many of the arrow you build after a while, or they are all not flying through, not spinning right, isn't it? Why? Too many components and they're not concentric. In these cases, again, you glue the inner tube into this unit first. Do you have the care that is, is, is still on the table? No. You put on the table on this edge, so they need to hang on the table. Because there's no way you can put it on the table. The more on the table, this is too high compared to the tubing. You could canter it. So you need to put it on the table because this whole line, the inner tube and the neck is the same. So you need to put it on the edge of the table with the insert falling. That's the only way to do it. Or you can just stand it up like this. All right? After you glue this part, you can glue it glue right into the shaft. And that's exactly what the CTI is. CTI 166. Same few points, insert. And this year, for people who told me they absolutely would prefer a fixed head broadhead, I got a mim dagger to go on top of that. That's the sexiest looking arrow you've ever seen if that is one. Seriously, if you like a thin arrow, if you've seen what that looks like, you'll sell every one of them. But just put it this way, it's a lot of work. <laughs> because you want to make sure after you glue this piece into this shaft, it's perfectly centered again. You're dealing with a thinner, thinner tubing. Any mistake, you exaggerate. But in this case, think about it. The only exaggeration from this point to about here. That's your viewpoint, right? That's your broadhead. Compare traditional, your insert, your inner, inner piece, then your node. The node of this is right here. See the difference? All right, then we go to the next one. Aha, for the target guys. Most of them have never seen this. This is an arrow concept for the 23 and the 300 size. When you shoot ASA, IB, or local targets, when three arrows got squeezed into, say, the 11 ring, how are you going to put your arrow in it? You don't need to, like, well, come on, 11 ring is this big. There's three 2364 in it. 
you're the fourth guy who shoot it. You think you'll make it? This is what this destroy a double shoulder. Look at that! You got a fuel point that is much smaller than the arrow shaft. It's like a punch point, isn't it? But then at the same time, what's guess what this insert is made of? 42053 HRC stainless steel or GL5 titanium. It's superbly hard. So the moment you fire this arrow into that three arrow that is hawking the 11 ring, you can guarantee to break at least one of them and still maintain inside that 11 ring. But your friends won't be too happy. But you should be very happy because you just got more arrow to build <laughs> for your customer. Because this shoulder will destroy whatever is in the ring. Because the moment you touch any other arrow, you crack it. But because the point is smaller, you, you squeeze yourself right into that three arrow group. That's the reason it's called the destroyer. And not to mention, you say, well, well other people can hit me and the arrow be destroyed, isn't it? This is arrow concept arrow. What do I have? A second layer of carbon. That means you can crack this carbon all day long. You got the second carbon with the glue to support this. So even if this carbon is cracked all the way down to here, is it shootable? You're good. No problem. <laughs> so, you can see I played this game for a while. Otherwise, you would not know how to design things like this. <laughs> and so I have the stainless steel, titanium, and all the points. See, this is what it looked like when you finish with it. Isn't that cool? When you imagine you've got three guys hawking the 11 ring and you know you're good in going in it. You're like, whack! Ah, when they pull the arrow, they will have to put away the arrow and get the third arrow from the back, which you know they kind of shoot word of them with the third arrow. Most of the guy with 12 arrows going to ASA IBO, they only got two arrows that's shootable. All the rest, it won't give back the 11 ring. They're done. <laughs> you just mop them over the floor. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> okay, now for the ASA Pro class, senior class. Arrow concept points. You notice there's no insert in it? Guess what? That's double shoulder, isn't it? But that's even more. Show them more. We discontinue that and we got the Aero Concept 2.0. Now you can put weight in it. Oh, by the way, this year we have one more. We have 50 grains now. So you can build the arrow with the Aero Concept point. You take the arrow pushing out using a 166 to put the tool. You can remove and change the weight. Now everybody's weight when you're screwing it, you notice when you shoot four or five or six times, the weight will start to move, isn't it? We'll make that a rattling and people will stack the weight on top of each other. Well, your front of center is all screwed up because the weights are never tight. If you take a close look at my weight, it got O-rings on it, a double O-ring. So the moment when you use the tool, tip, using our two end, which is based on a quarter inch hex. You can now shaft this thing in all the way and change the weight you want and adjust. Now that's the beauty of arrow concept point. You can change your point weight after you build the point for what you need. For example, on super windy day, you don't feel it's good, you're shooting blazers in the arrow vein. Now you want to add 20 grains, you're having a 30 in it, so you can put it in, screw the way out, put a 50 in it. In the field, with no tools, except this. Isn't that cool? So, most of my certified and trained dealer, this is the part on the target side, they really didn't see, because nobody read the catalog that thoroughly. That's the reason the class is so important, because even I give you the catalog, tell you about it, until you see it, you never get it. Now you get it, you know, the moment you have this, you see, I got a lot of Canadian dealers, they're fully into this. This have been winning the Canadian for the last eight years. They all shooting this system in Canada, but not in US. Don't ask me why, because no dealer really want to read. All right, besides, of course, our certified and trained dealer. Now, of course, in order to do it right, we have the arrow chain ring too. See that with the arrow chain, now very important, if the arrow is not squared, when you chamfer it, whatever is higher side will be less 
than the one you load. So the first thing you must square the arrow first, chamfer. If you feel that the thing is not chamfer white, square one more time and re-chamfer. That's the reason I told my customer, cut your arrow at least half inch longer when you build it. When it finished building the arrow, I mean not talking across crossbow, until vertical bow. Because vertical bow, crossbow, you got a 300, it's pretty hard to be off. But when you deal with vertical bow, like the 246, 204, 166, cut the in arrow at least half inch longer. Build the whole arrow because you may have chamfer two or three, one or two or three times. The arrow will be shorter. So when you finish building the arrow, then you put the arrow with the insert on the saw and you cut them all even. Now you've got perfect length. Yes, those are the tricks of the trade. Until you build enough, you will not learn that. Because when you start chamfering the second or third time, you're losing 116 at a time. Three times is 3 16 That's about a quarter inch shorter. How are you going to make all the arrow the same length? You couldn't. But after you build it, then you can cut the tail off. And we make the 100 and 180, okay? The 100 is what I use. And if you get too dirty, you can't clean it with anything, you can throw both things into your dishwasher on the, on the spoon side. This is made of stainless steel with diamond, industrial diamond and then was plate is sitting on pure silver. So when I'm selling it for 25 bucks, I'm not really asking for a lot of money. You're talking stainless steel tool with, with industrial diamond that was sitting binding, soldered with silver. Those are sterling silver, they're not sterling silver, they're pure silver because that's the only way you're able to bind the, 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 the diamond crystal. Other thing with diamond will fall right off. So the 180 is 20 bucks and the 100 is about 250 for retail. You got your 30 points. All right, next one. The Aero Boat 2. 250? Yes. What do you mean $250? $2 and uh, 25 bucks yeah. and $19. 20, 20 and 20. 20, 25 and 20, yeah. 1995. Okay, the Aero Boat 2. That's what the Aero Boat 2 200 is, okay? I no longer carry this. This arrow shaft is actually a labeled. I design, I, I spec this when uh, Black Eagle was making the executioner. This is the 200 spine shaft. The arrow bow to 200, yes, it's an executioner. And then of course, all these things are there. Then the arrow bow G, that is based on a zombie slayer, which is a mistake, but it's high module. I do not recommend anybody who's shooting arrow bow G in cold weather. The modulation is too high. The moment you go about 14, 4 degrees, the arrow can crack around right here. And then, of course, now in current year, we're dealing with Aero Bow 3 now. No, oh, no, no. The Aero Bow 2, Dragon Slayer. Yes, the old Dragon Slayer is three shafts, full length. You are talking about 750 grain shafts. Yes, you did hear me right. 750 grain 22 inch shaft. <laughs> Those are the elephant arrows. You put a 250 grain broadhead, you put a fire knock on it. Ta da! You're over a thousand. In a lot of places when you shoot elephant, Cape Buffalo, they won't let you shoot unless your arrow is over a thousand grains. People pack sand, put tubings in it, none of them worked. Every shot is different. This is the only way to build that class of arrow. You can actually shoot up to 50 yards with it with a 250 grain broadhead and be accurate. Yes, when you start 250 grain broadhead, you don't use arrow veins. You use feathers because this arrow is not going to fly over 240 feet per second. The vein is not doing nothing but give you a guidance. Feather is the best.